guys, today I'm talking all things to do with non-communicable diseases and what that means really is diseases which are not infectious. So we're not talking about cholera which you get from dirty water, we're not talking about flu which you get from other people being gross and coughing and sneezing all over you, we're talking about the diseases you get that are not transmissible from one person to another. So yeah, what is a non-communicable disease? Well it is a non-infectious disease which is caused by other things such as your environment or your genes. Now, there are lots of different risk factors which increase your chance of getting a particular type of disease which I'm going to go into now. So first of all, your genes. So lots of people out there can't get cystic fibrosis because they don't actually inherit those genes. So it's not a spreadable disease, but it is an inherited disease. Other risk factors include your sex. So obviously women are more likely to get breast cancer. Men will get prostate cancer. There's things like your lifestyle choices, so if you choose to smoke, obviously you'll increase your chance of getting lung cancer. If you drink too much, you'll increase your chances of getting liver cancer. I think Martin's going to shout at me because I'm very small. He keeps telling me off for being really small in my videos. Is that zooming in? Sorry Martin, looks like I'm really small. Um, so yeah, lifestyle choices for sure, and other things such as ionising radiation, so that could be UV light from the sun, for example. Right, let's now look at the horrible topic of cancer. Now you need to know all these different terms and what they mean. Let's start by looking at what a tumour is. Well, it's a mass of abnormal cells, so effectively a big lump. Now tumours can either be benign or malignant, and Benign tends to mean the good one, if there is a good type of tumour to get, and malignant is the one that gets people quite scared. So we'll start by looking at the benign tumour. Now the thing about these is they just grow in one place, so they're contained to one area of your body, and that's a good thing, um, because it won't actually tend to be super harmful, because it's literally just a lump. The times when it can be tricky is if that lump or that tumour grows somewhere like your brain or your heart because there's nowhere for it to really grow out into and it's that pressure of it building up and putting a force on the surrounding tissue that actually may cause you a lot of harm. But generally speaking, benign tumours are okay. Now it's malignant tumours that, like I've already said, get people worried because these are tumours which spread from one part of the body to another and they form secondary tumours wherever they end up because you can imagine that a part of a primary tumour may break off, get transported in your bloodstream or your lymph system and it can end up being deposited at other parts in your body and it's there when it starts growing, obstructing blood vessels etc, that's where it causes the problem. So yeah, malignant tumours are terrible, terrible things. Now, the reason people get so scared of cancer is because it's actually really hard to tackle because all it is is your actual normal body cells just dividing in an uncontrolled way. It's not like they're a foreign pathogen, it's not like they're a bacteria or virus that our immune system can go and attack because it recognises it as being foreign. The problem with cancer cells is that they're just our normal cells that have just gone out of control. So our white blood cells and our, our lymphocytes and our phagocytes aren't actually going out to detect them, which is why they can remain undetected for years sometimes. Now there are two main ways in which we treat cancer. One is radiotherapy and one is chemotherapy. So as the name suggests, chemotherapy involves chemicals and they're targeted at the cancer cells. And what they do is they cause those cancer cells to self-destruct, i.e. to kill themselves. However, chemotherapy makes people very sick, has lots of horrible side effects. Some people's hair falls out. Some people get very, very sick, um, nauseous. And it can, it's really hard to target it specifically at the cancer cells, so it can cause a lot of damage to surrounding healthy cells. Radiotherapy is slightly different. This time we're using radiation, which we fire at that tumour, at that cancer, and we try and destroy the cells that way, and we try and stop them dividing by mitosis. But again, healthy cells can be affected, which is why it's, neither of these ways are ideal solutions. And this is why we're looking at monoclonal antibodies. We're going to talk about the different risk factors to do with getting diseases. So we're going to be looking at smoking now, really, and why smoking can lead to so many problems with your health. And that's because cigarettes contain lots of horrible, horrible chemicals. First of all, they contain tar, which is a black sticky stuff, which is a carcinogen. Now, a carcinogen's definition is that it's a cancer-causing agent. So what tar does is it causes some of those cells inside your lungs to divide abnormally, and some of those can become tumours. It also coats the inside of your lungs with that black sticky stuff. And if you've ever Googled a smoker's lung, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. The lung actually turns black. It's really gross whereas a healthy lung should be a nice light pink colour. Cigarettes also contain nicotine. Nicotine is the addictive drug that is so, the reason why people who smoke find it so hard to give up. Nicotine makes your blood a bit more viscous, it makes it thicker, 
which means that you're more likely to get high blood pressure and that can lead to issues to do with your heart. So that's a causal factor towards heart attacks, so terrible stuff, nicotine. You've got carbon monoxide, which is a type of gas. Now carbon monoxide combines with the haemoglobin in your red blood cells and it stops your red blood cells transporting oxygen. So obviously you're transporting less oxygen around your body, which is obviously a terrible thing, and you will get very short of breath. You can get emphysema, which is a horrible disease whereby your alveoli, which are the air sacs in your lungs, they can get destroyed, they can expand, which reduces the surface area for gas exchange, so emphysema is a very nasty disease. Um, you may have heard that cigarette smoke can paralyse the cilia, which are these special cells inside your windpipe, your trachea. What they do is they waft and they help remove mucus and bacteria from your lungs. Well, if they're paralysed, then that bacteria is just going to sit there and that leads to infection where things like bronchitis come in. So yeah, all in all, terrible, terrible things to smoking. I'm trying to think of other things. Premature ageing, we know people, they get the lines around their mouth from the sucking of the cigarette. Um, you can get yellow tans from the nicotine, so it's a pretty pretty unpleasant habit, really. And then obviously, the, I've already mentioned this, but like massive link between smoking and heart attack. And talking more about heart attacks, there's lots of risk factors. So there's lots of different things you can do which will increase your risk of getting a heart attack. One will be smoking, one will be drinking too much. Another thing will be if you become obese and you're eating too much because you're more likely to get diabetes type 2, which has a very strong link towards cancer. Um, if you don't exercise enough, if your blood pressure gets too high, all of these factors interrelate and may lead to heart attacks or strokes. So let's talk a bit more about diabetes type 2. Diabetes type 2 is due to poor diet and what happens is your pancreas stops responding to the insulin so you can't lower your blood sugar levels. People with diabetes can end up in quite serious trouble, they can lose their eyesight, they can lose the ability to walk. And like I said, it is a massive risk factor towards heart disease. Now we're looking at drinking too much. So people who are alcoholics, they may cause their liver to become cirrhosed or get cirrhosis, which is where portions of the liver cells die effectively. You may develop liver cancer. People who drink serious amounts may actually change the structure of their brain and the texture of it can become very pulpy and mushy. So obviously they're not going to be able to process things properly anymore. Um, and the problem with alcohol is it is an incredibly addictive drug. Some say it's more addictive to things like class A drugs such as heroin and cocaine. And the other thing is it's socially acceptable to drink, so it's quite a hard thing because it's so readily available. Um, and yeah, I think it's quite hard for people to realise if they have got a problem because it's quite normal to go out for lots of drinks. The real issues arise with alcohol is in pregnant women because if you drink a huge amount while you're pregnant, your baby can develop fetal alcohol syndrome, which means that it could be born deformed, it could have alterations in its limb structure, its jaw for example. Um, you've got issues with heart problems, kidney problems, liver problems. Yeah, so I once taught a girl who had actually got this and honestly I just felt so sorry for her because imagine as a baby you're just like waiting to be born and then your mother's making all these terrible life decisions and damaging you and there's nothing you can do about it. And I just thought that was really unfair on her and she was really nice. Anyway, I'm getting all morbid. I'll try and find you some questions now. I hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to give it a like if you did and peace out guys. Bye. Question four, malignant tumours are called cancers. Describe how a tumour can spread to different parts of the body and that's where two marks. So remember I just told you that parts of the tumour can break off, they can end up in the bloodstream and then they can travel in the blood to the other parts of the body. You could have also said that they travel in the lymph system. Survival rates for people with cancer have improved a lot. Some people who are alive 10 years after diagnosis are considered to be cured. Figure 5 shows data for people diagnosed with cancer in 1961 and 2001. So the grey bar is 1961 and the white bar is 2001. And we've got various types of cancer. Look at the data in figure 5 for skin cancer. Calculate the percentage increase in the survival rate of people diagnosed with skin cancer in 1961 compared to 2001. And the answer must be given in three significant figures. So make sure you're looking at the right type of cancer, skin cancer. Okay, so then looking at the skin cancer columns then, it's just a matter of reading it off the y-axis. So in order to work out the percentage change, you want to do 89, which was the percentage of people alive in 2001, compared with 48, which is the percentage in 1961. So you want to do 89, take 48, 
divided by the original, which was 48, times by 100, and you'll get an answer which is like 85.416, blah, blah, blah. And they have said give it to three sig fig. Do not lose a whole mark by not doing it to three significant figures. Make sure you're rounding it properly. So that's 85.4. Look at the data in figure 5 for bowel and prostate cancer. Compare the survival rates for bowel and prostate cancer. Suggest reasons for the comparisons you have made. That is worth four marks. So again, make sure you're looking at the right... Um, column, so bowel and prostate, and you just need to make lots of comments describing the data and then give some reasons afterwards for why. So you want to first of all state that they have similar survival rates for diagnosis in 1961. Then you want to say that the survival rates have improved for both cancers, but if you actually look closely you can see that the survival rate for prostate cancer has improved much more. And now for the final two marks, just give some reasons for this. So maybe you could say that people are being diagnosed more, um, early, you could say that there's potentially improved screening programs, maybe people are being get given better drugs that work um, more effectively, and you could also make a generic comment about there's a difference in how easy it is to remove those tumours. I've said about 10 marks worth of things, just make sure you're saying four separate points.